Hello and welcome. So in this lecture, I'm going to address a very important vulnerability that is called as broken authentication. Okay. So as the name suggests, the authentication is broken, but this vulnerability is not as simple as it sounds. Okay. So for example, using some enumeration, you have discovered a hidden subdomain that is called as developers.collect.htv. And if in Chrome, uh, you try to navigate to that hidden subdomain, you see that it requires authentication. Now this type of authentication is uh, usually called as the HTTP basic authentication and there are multiple ways to bypass this. But since we already have another vulnerability that is called as blind XXE, so we are going to chain that vulnerability through sensitive information disclosure to crack this. We don't need to uh, log in brute force this form. Fine. So in the previous lecture, we have wrote a script that was called as XXE exfiltrator.py. So if we go to the VS code, we can see this is the basic script. Fine. And we are importing some modules that is very common thing. We have this pass post request function and so on. The important thing here is why we have wrote this class. So by writing this class, what we are doing is we are defining a function called as do get and we cannot change the name of this function. That's why we are overriding the default settings. Fine. And what this function is basically doing is if any web request, if any incoming web request comes to this particular web server, it is going to check if that request is a get request. And if the request is a get request, it is going to extract the value of the query string parameter called x. Okay. And we already know that the value of the query string parameter x is base64 encoded. And this is because we are using PHP filter to uh, retrieve the data from the backend. Fine. And this is doing all of this magic and decrypting the base64 encoded key. Fine. And finally, we are retrieving the data. So we are going to use this vulnerability to exfiltrate sensitive data from the backend. Fine. So let's do python3 and we are going to do the name of the script dash r to give the request file which is the malicious.request and as we can see the file is updated successfully. Now I want to retrieve etc apache2 sites enabled and we have a file called as collect.htb.conf okay. So this is a good practice of storing the configuration files by using the convention domain.conf. So as you can see, we have the decoded value. Now, if we try to read something, we can see the document root is var dot 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 collect and public. So we already know that the backend is utilizing a naming convention, which is following like uh, domain.conf. Now we know that there is a subdomain called as developers.collect.htb. So there should be a configuration file, which should be uh, developers.collect.htb.conf. Okay. So let's try to read that file etc apache2 okay and we have sites enabled and we have developers dot collect dot htb dot conf okay if we try to read this file uh, we again see that this has some interesting stuff right here and we can see uh, authentication name is this and they are using the basic http authentication as i told you and it is also saying that the authentication user file is at this file path so we are going to copy that and we can simply read that. Okay. And it is a good practice to store the passwords by hashing them. As we can see, this is a password hash. So they are not storing the passwords in plain text. So we will be needing hashcat to crack this particular hash. As we can see, we are in the host operating system. Now I can go to the folder called as hashes and I'm going to create a new file, right? So let's create a new file here. We need to create a text document, call it uh, pollution. That's the name of the box and we can paste the file right here right so let's control s to save this control q to quit this okay we can go back and we can do control l and we can type powershell i like powershell instead of the cmd because powershell accepts the ls argument let's clear the terminal it also accepts the cleared argument which is like very common with the linux operating systems so i'm going to do a dot backslash the name of the binary which is ex in this case followed by the path to the hashcat file. Okay. And that uh, should be in the folder called as hashes. And the name of the file is pollution.txt. Finally, we need to specify the word list, which was uh, rockq.txt. We can hit enter and we are starting hashcat in auto detect mode. Okay. So this will automatically detect the type of hash and we'll try to crack it with the given word list that is rockq.txt. So as we can see, it is, uh, seems like it already cracked that and here we go 
So we can see the status is cracked and this is the password which is rocket and which type of hash this is using. Yeah, so it is using Apache MD5, MD5 APR. Okay, so this may be an LDAP server, SMTP, HTTP, FTP, etc. The important thing is uh, Hashcat is able to automatically detect the hash mode without specifying the dash M option. And this is going to be the plain text password which is rocket. Okay, now we need to go to the Linux machine. Now let's try to log in. So it was developers group, developers underscore group, and we have the password called as rocket. Let's try to sign in. And as you can see, we are now able to access forward slash login.php. So yes, that was all. And this is a very critical vulnerability and it really depends upon the scenario. This vulnerability can result into the complete account takeover of any user on the internet if it is successfully exploited. Okay, so this was just to show you how uh, multiple vulnerabilities can be changed together. Okay, and writing this script was the most important part of this uh, video. So we will meet in the next picture. Till then, have a wonderful day ahead and thank you.